Καλησπέρα σας και για μένα είναι μεγάλη τιμή και για μένα να σας πω είναι προσωπικό αυτό που γίνεται εδώ. Είμαι πολύ υπερήφανος που για δεύτερη χρονιά μπορώ να έρθω και να δημιουργήσουμε η λέξη που μεταχείρισα σήμερα μαζί με το ΣΥΜΟ, μαζί με τα παιδιά από το Enterprise Greece, μαζί από το, από το Hellexpo, Alignment. Alignment. Αυτή η λέξη είναι πολύ σπουδαία και θα το συζητήσουμε λίγο σήμερα γιατί η μέρα ήταν υπέροχη και μάθαμε τόσα πολλά και άμα έχετε έτσι μία αναστατομάρα γιατί είμαστε εδώ όλη η μέρα και δεν έχετε βγει να πάρετε λίγο αέρα η αναστατομάρα είναι αυτό που θα συζητήσουμε σήμερα. Because αναστατομάρα to me and I'm going to help you understand that και όπως ξέρετε, οι πιο πολλοί που με ξέρετε Έτρωγα πολύ ξύλο στο ελληνικό σχολείο και μου πει μάνα μου σήμερα άμα δεν πω λίγα ελληνικά να μην γυρίσω. Αλλά θα πω λίγα γιατί τα μπερδεύω. So we'll go back and forth and you can practice your English and I'll practice my Greek, okay? But, αναστατομάρα. It's this uncomfortable feeling. It's disruption. Disruption is a Latin word. Disrupt is to break up. The problem with the world we live in right now and the, all the information you take, took in today is that it causes this feeling of uncertainty, this ability to not predict the future. When you think about a business environment, it's critical that you have a forecast, you have predictability. If you're on the stock exchange and you have a quarterly analyst meeting, you better be able to talk about your performance and your future performance. So we're going to talk about disruption today. And we're going to do it in a way that I hope brings you some learnings with everything that uh, you've picked up today. I'm going to try not to get into a lot of the, uh, as we say in English, minutia. All these leptomerias. Τι έχετε τις λεπτομέρειες; Και αυτό που είδα εγώ σήμερα, συγχαρητήρια Νίκο, έχετε ανθρώπους στην Ελλάδα που καταλαβαίνουν τι γίνεται. Και έτσι δεν χρειαζόμαστε εμείς να φέρνουμε ανθρώπους από την Αμερική να σας πούνε σας τι κάνετε και τι να κάνετε και τι να μην κάνετε. Ασφαλώς είναι σπουδαίο να είμαστε μαζί και να καταλαβαίνουμε ένα τον άλλον, αλλά από αυτό που είδα σήμερα και αυτά που έχω δει από το ΣΥΜΟ και από όλη την Ελλάδα που ήμουν και στη Θεσσαλονίκη ε, αρχές του μηνός, ε, το περασμένο μήνα, είναι ανθρώποι εδώ που καταλαβαίνουν τι γίνεται. So the fact is, what are we going to do about it? Nike says do it. Just do it. It's not that easy. So a couple of things you heard today. Lifestyles are changing. The emotional connection to food is changing. It's like a Rubik's Cube. Every time you try to put it together, it falls apart. And the reason it's that dynamic, particularly in the US right now, is because of the convergence of what I call the cohorts. Okay? It's not just millennials. It's not just the baby boomers. It's not just the Zs. These people live together. They operate together. When you go in a grocery store, you don't go down the millennial aisle, and you don't go down the baby boomer aisle. Είμαστε όλοι μία έτσι, μία μάσα. Και όλοι μαθαίνουμε ο ένας από τον άλλον. Και γι' αυτό είναι τόσο αναστατομάρα στην Αμερική, in the marketplace. Because these people are going to be around a long time. If you look at what's happening, particularly with millennials that everybody wants to talk about, and Gen X. Right now, they are the heart and soul of the economy. As you see them go out to 2050, the millennials are a large group, but those Gen Xers, what John told you earlier today, they're going to stick around. In three years, the Gen X generation will be 40% of the consumer population in an ability to buy and, and participate in commerce, because today they're only about 15 years old. So it's going to continue. The population size is going to continue. The whole conversation around uh, understanding your consumer is going to uh, really be an issue. And a great example of that is the exercise I'm going to take you through. But I'm going to recommend this book. So if you are interested in reading a book and you're interested in reading about consumer change and behavior, this is a great book. These guys uh, come from a, a deep research company. And they actually help you understand how the cohorts come together and engage with each other. What does that mean? Imanamu, 
88 χρονό μου έκανε text να μάθει τι έγινε με την ομιλία. So, can you imagine your 88-year-old mother engaging with you on text and me, a baby boomer, being able to text her back because we're now starting to communicate. It's important you understand that dynamic. So here's an example of that. You know Batman the movie, right? Everybody knows Batman the movie. You know how many actors were in the Batman series? There were nine different actors who played Batman. Who's your Batman? Who do you remember as Batman? Desmond, who's your favorite actor as Batman? Anybody? Adam. Michael Keaton. Michael Keaton. Adam. Adams. He was the he was a, the get goer. Nico Tila, Fatha Pisisi. Your name? Michael Keaton. Okay. Anybody else? Does anybody know uh, Will Arnett? Do you know Will Arnett in this room? Anybody? One person. Stand up. Come on, tell them who Will Arnett is. He played Batman in the? He played Batman. He was the voice of Batman in the Lego movie. You don't know that because you're, under the age, you're over the age of 15. But you had Michael Keaton. Nobody said Val Kilmer. What about Ben Affleck? He was the most recent one. Everybody has a Batman. And as many people are in this room, you've got to understand why they remember that Batman and why they react with that Batman. And the reason that happens in this room is because we all have different perceptions of what happens. This is a heat map. I showed it last year. I'm trying to uh, update it every year I come. You heard a lot about street food. This heat map represents farmers markets in the US and how they're growing. And you can see how deep it is in the Metro Northeast marketplace where the clusters are, are heavy. But this is happening all across America. You know what this is? Ilaiki. You know when you were a kid? Στην Λιούπολη είχαμε λαϊκή. Όταν πήγαμε στην Αμερική, πήγαμε στο ελληνικό μαγαζί, στο Baltimore, μια φορά το μήνα, να πάρουμε τον Τενεκέ με τις ελιές, τον Τενεκέ με τα λάδια, τον Τενεκέ με τη φέτα. Τώρα, άμα πας σε όποιο μέρος στην Αμερική, θα πας στο Farmer's Market και θα είναι κάποιος Έλληνας εκεί και θα σου πουλάει λάδι από το χωριό του ή τυρί από το χωριό του, πως το έφερε από την Ελλάδα, το χωριό του. And maybe he did. But this is what's happening. And guess who's in the farmer's markets every, every Saturday morning? The millennials and the boomers and the Gen Xers and everybody's in there together. And some of them are selling each other. So it's really important you understand that that dynamic is something that's going to cause people this change in how they interact with food and what happens. You heard it. You can get food anytime, anywhere, and any kind of food you want in the US marketplace. And we're going to talk about the blurring of the channels. People say, oh, Phil, the channels have blurred. The channels have blurred a long time ago. When you hear people talk about food service, and it used to be that you know, there was a restaurateur. The restaurateur, if you ever went to a Greek diner in 1955, in the front of his shop, he had a bakery. Me baklava, ke me kularakia, ke me pithes. That was a retail store in a diner. In 1955, 56, it's not a phenomenon that food and the occasion of food is now mixed up because people have started to take it on the road or have it at home or take it at home and put it on the road. Packaging companies in the US today, you know what they're doing? They're booming because they're trying to figure out how they're going to help chefs go from the beautiful plating of the food. When you sit down, they plated the food και η παρουσία είναι τόσο απίστευτη. Κοίτα, ωραίο πιάτο, πώς το φτιάξαμε. Okay, αυτό το πιάτο, εγώ το θέλω στο σπίτι σε δύο ώρες. It has to transport the quality, the purity. Δεν θέλω οι πατάτες να είναι σουρωμένες. Θέλω να είναι πατάτες. Crisp. So all this dynamic, because why? People continue to experience food in different ways. They grow up with it different ways. And it's important that you understand that critical dynamic and how then you go to market. Yes, they're blurring. It's not the same thing. Uh, the retired General Sineski, who is a decorated, um, 
He's the first Japanese American uh, general who's running the uh, Veteran Affairs Office. But he's a very decorated man. He has a big job because the Veterans Affairs Office in the US is really screwed up, and he had to overhaul it. Okay? And he said, this is what he said about disruption. If you don't like change, you're, you're going to like irrelevance even less. Because if you don't break your model and start over, you're going to be extinct. And it's happening. The whole Amazon thing, we're going to talk about that. They started with books. Now they're in food. Everybody's going crazy. Google's not far behind them coming into the marketplace. And did you know Walmart has Jet.com? Do you know Jet.com is? That's their answer to what Amazon is trying to accomplish. Do you know that Walmart spent 22 years building an infrastructure of warehouses so they can accommodate and leverage large quantities of product? And everybody was laughing at them. Nobody knew what they were doing. Do you know that Amazon, which is about to be a trillion dollar business, doesn't care about profit. It cares about free cash flow and investing back in their business. Bezos said he doesn't know if he's going to be profitable until about 2025. You want to be patient? You want to make money? And all of a sudden, 20 years later, they're giants because they're disrupting the marketplace. It's happening everywhere. There's quotes about the grocery industry. People like Walmart executives are telling you this is the hardest business environment grocery executives in the U.S. have faced. They're getting clobbered. The stock market's getting clobbered. The big brands have these huge stores. They don't know what they're going to do with $100,000 stores because the consumer is tired of walking around a store and trying to find out that they can get frozen uh, bread on discount. So the dynamics here continue to change, and the manufacturers have to change with them. So we've talked a little bit about the big brands. I'm going to give you some more information about them. Nestle selling off bits of their business before I left. I think it was Unilever just last week. They sold the margarine business. They sold the margarine business to KKK, a KKR, the venture capital group, okay? Eight billion dollars, eight billion dollars. It's a $700 million business. That's almost like a nine, that's, that's almost a nine multiple. Margarine. Who wants margarine? I'll tell you one thing. If I can go get a $700 million business for my family and be a small manufacturer and try to figure out how to put Greek olive oil in margarine, and sell it in a different environment, maybe you know, there's something to be said for an independent entrepreneur. But the big companies are getting out. It's happening every day. It's happening a lot faster. We've brought up the uh, yogurt uh, conversation. Pillsbury selling off their yogurt business. Nobody wants to be in the yogurt business anymore. Kraft sold it off. That's why Chobani sold up. It was the biggest stroke of luck for Greece that ever known to mankind. And, I made a comment about Greek yogurt, and I'm very passionate about Greek brands, and I love the guys at Faya, and I love uh, the other Greek brands, but you know what? We were there first. Our big companies were there, trying to figure out how they were going to get product on Olympic Airways across the pond 10 years before Mr. Chobani. So it can be done. The reason I'm showing you this is because right now, every day, if you're not uh, picking up the uh, Wall Street Journal or getting information from any resource to be very active in what's taking place, you're going to be left behind. Uh, Cargill, uh, I worked for Cargill. Disclosure, I was in the meat business for half of my 35 years. Pork was vertically integrated. Beef, pork, turkey, chicken, up to Svaya, to pre-cooked. They're investing in plant-based protein. Plant-based protein. The movement to plant-based food is coming. What's plant-based food? Horta. Come on, exactly. So this radical disruption is happening again because it goes back to understanding how each one of these groups is converging inside the consumption environment, but also with where the economics of how they make decisions. The Walmart, excuse me, the Whole Food Amazon impact was incredible. The day it was announced, June 15th and 16th, look at the stock prices the next day of Kellogg's, Kraft, General Mills, Walmart, 
Target and Kroger. Kroger's the largest national supermarket chain in America. Things are not good, even now, since June. And if you saw the video earlier today about Amazon Go, that's old news. They bought Whole Foods because half of Whole Foods is going to be a depot. And if you're an Amazon Prime person like I am and you pay a membership, I can get whatever I want in Amazon. I can order it right now. And when I get to New York on Tuesday, 24 hours. Και δεν νομίζετε πως θα πάω να πάρω φαΐ εγώ από το Amazon όταν ταξιδεύω. Εγώ δεν πρόκειται να το πάρω γιατί θα με σκότωσε η μάνα μου και η γυναίκα μου. But that's what happens. And you don't have to have it delivered, by the way. Μπορεί να πας στο μαγαζί να το πάρεις. Στο έχει εκεί στη βαλίτσα. Uh, in the very smartly uh, crafted food service package. So watching these types of developments is really important because it helps you understand who your customer is, and who your competitor is. These are the top 10 brands. Uh, when you think about branding, and we say about marketing, and you talk about millions of dollars, back in the 80s, there was a book written called Barbarians at the Gate. And it was a story about venture capital buying Nabisco. And that was the beginnings of small independent brands becoming consolidated monstrosities like these. And now, these big, huge conglomerates who make processed food with a lot of salt and sugar and, and, and cornstarch are not keeping up with the consumer. So they're scrambling. One of the things you're going to find out is not only are they scrambling, but they're losing market share. Billions. And they're losing market share to small, very quick, very adaptive entrepreneurs. People we represent, Specialty Food Association from one and two guy companies to companies that are third, fourth generation, who are making big inroads in classic categories like snacks, like beef jerky. Ξέρετε τι είναι beef jerky. Δεν θα σας το πω, θα σας το πω μετά. Γιατί δεν θα πω με. Beef jerky. Αυτό ήταν 99 cents, ούτε ένα δολάριο δεν ήταν, στα καζαλουνάδικα. Και όταν σταματάγαμε να πάρω βενζίνα, Παίρναμε ένα beef jerky και μια μπύρα, όταν είμαστε 17-18 χρόνων και έγινε η δουλειά. You didn't have to eat the rest of the day. Beef jerky τώρα στην Αμερική είναι 4-5-6 δολάρια. Και it's, it's a premium. Και έρχεται από πολλά διάφορα μέρη το beef jerky. Αλλά αυτά είναι σπουδαία γιατί οι μεγάλες εταιρείες τώρα διαλύγουν. So what are you going to do? You're, you're going to acquire or you're going to create accelerators and incubators to develop this opportunity. 18 billion dollars. The top 20 brands lost 18 billion in market share in six years. It's significant. So now what? What's going to happen? That's the consumer. That's the supplier. That's the retailer. But guess what else is happening? You heard a little about it earlier. I'm a now an association executive. I was a I was a food industry uh, manufacturing executive for 35 years. The last five years, I've become an association executive. I represent bodies of people to help them with the legislative environment. So I have to be very aware of what's going on in Washington to help make sure our voice is heard because when you say Washington, you say trellos. And now, for the Anna you think it's trellos, it's very trellos to Washington. So when somebody says, Hi, I'm from Washington. I'm here to help you. You better run for the door. This chart represents existing legislation that's being worked through Congress. The very men no yaiklo yes. After seeing the dulias and the merines, putavune nomi. You just heard about uh, the the verification program. That's just one of many things that's coming down the pike. In our industry, we are fearful that it's going to take them another five years to figure out what the definition of natural is. It took them 10 years to tell us what organic means, so that there was a symbol, and if you were doing organic business, they come to your plant, and you didn't get shut down. You were authorized to use the organic stamp. But the legislative environment is something else that's causing people big, big problems. The biggest news in Washington, D.C. is the big brands have an association. 
the Grocery Manufacturers Association. It is the lobby group that represents big brands. So over the years, they fought legislation. They fought California Proposition 65 to take away the labeling. It cost them $65 million in two months. They fought other legislation in Texas and Ohio with respect to packaging, with respect to minimum wage. Από το 1908. Γιατί άμα δεν έχεις τρίτες οργανώσεις στην Αμερική, δεν θα έχεις φωνή στη Βουλή. It's the lobbying path. It's being destroyed. It's good news for us, because our specialty food association is getting stronger and some of the smaller companies are able to react, but some of these can put you out of business before you even start. And you heard a great presentation earlier about it's very, very important you're informed. Άμα κάνετε ένα πράγμα, να διαβάζετε τι γίνεται. Ή εφημερίδα, ή ράδιο, whatever your means is, να διαβάζετε τι γίνεται, γιατί κάθε μέρα αλλάζει. So, what's the response here? What, what's going to happen? Okay? It's already happening. I want to show you some of the anastatomara that's turned into opportunities that are happening right now. Because I want you to be motivated. I want you to be encouraged. I want you to aspire to be successful and not get all worked up about this thing Uh, making you even hesitate. You heard Adi, he was persistent as hell. Once you break through, you're going to love it. Here's what's happening. Justin's. Do you know the uh, Reese's peanut butter cups? Have you ever had the chocolate me the, the cups with peanut butter? Oh, Justin ke mana tu fkaxene peanut butter cups. Ala ine USDA organic, voifai to Amazon. Είναι gluten free, είναι kosher. Και αυτά που λιώνται για 6-7 δολάρια. Για δύο. Και τα Reese's Cups, άμα πας πουθενά, παίρνεις δύο για τρία δολάρια. Πέντε χρόνια στην αγορά, σοκολατάκια, την πούλησε, ο Μπάρμπας που είναι ούτε 32 χρονό, 450 εκατομμύρια περίπου, σε μία εταιρεία, Hormel. Ποια είναι η Hormel? It's a meat company that processes pork. Why? Because he was not at the right place at the right time. He thought about it, and he figured out how to get into the marketplace. He also tells you his story. What else happened? This is a drive-thru. It's burgers. Doesn't it look like McDonald's to you? This is a company called Sheets. It's a convenience store chain. When you stop at this place, there's 40 pumps for you to buy gas. But guess what? They have a drive-in window. And it's a burger joint. And these guys are killing it. And when you come to the U.S., uh, they're in, uh, in Pennsylvania. And in that regional market, they go up and, up and down the Pennsylvania uh, corridor. You don't think you can do business in the U.S.? There's plenty of niches. Γιατί το βάλα αυτό εδώ? Pistachios, μη μου πείτε πως η Ελλάδα δεν έχει τα καλύτερα πιστήκια. Come on, come on. Πού είναι αυτά? Bed Bath and Beyond. Έχετε πάει στην Αμερική, ξέρετε τι είναι το Bed Bath and Beyond. Άμα πας στο Bed Bath and Beyond, είναι κάπου 900 τέτοια. Θα πας εκεί, δεν θα, θα πάει η γυναίκα σου και θα σε τρεβάει μαζί της, να πάρει shower curtain, να πάρει πετσέτες, να πάρει τα κολοκύθια που βάζει στο μπάνιο. Είναι σπιτικά. Άμα πας μέσα στο Bed Bath and Beyond και όπως μπεις μέσα σε όλα τα Bed Bath and Beyond, all of a sudden there's fruits, there's nuts, there's salsa, there's dry goods, they're all specialty products. Gluten free, non-GMO, saving the planet, good for you things. So when you pick up your bar of soap and your cleaning goods for your bathroom, you can buy pistachios. Anina dinaton. It's happening. Let me give you another one. Brooks Brothers. Ξέρετε το Brooks Brothers. Κουστούμια ωραία, γραβάτες, πουκάμισα. The Brooks Brothers έχει ανοίξει καινούριο brand. This is the red fleece. Και πουλάει και αυτό το ωραίο το... Φλιτζάνι, κόκκινο, red fleece. Τι είναι το red fleece? Το red fleece είναι το καινούριο καφενείο μέσα 
στο Brooks Brothers, στο υπόγειο. Και όταν κατεβείς, I think I have a picture, είναι σαν το Starbucks. Λέω, no, δεν έχω. Όταν κατεβείς, είναι σαν το Starbucks. Γιατί έχουν καφενείο μες στο Brooks Brothers, μπορεί να μου πει δε. Γιατί, όπως είχατε ακούσει, the third place, Scott told you this, στη δουλειά, στο σπίτι, and the third place. Πού είναι το third place στην Ελλάδα? Πού είναι το third place στην Ελλάδα? Come on, it's not a trick question. Το καφενείο! Καφενείο, get it, coffee. Remember Howard Schultz, the guy that started Starbucks? He went to Italy, saw the coffee shops, he said, oh my God, this could be incredible. He went back, Starbucks, Café Neo, coffee, Brooks Brothers. It's happening. This is how the retailer is going to stay in business. Yes, there's e-commerce. Yes, you have to be savvy. But did you know, this is beef jerky. Smoked and pressed beef jerky. In Denver. If you go to the Denver airport, in an aperiptero, all beef jerky from buffalo, from elk, from beef. It's It's a billion dollar business. Billion B. Okay? Και αυτό είναι μια κυρία που είναι εκεί, κάθεται και περιμένει να το πάρεις και στο κάνει scan. Δεν πιάνει τίποτα. Κάνει την παραγγελία και τα βάζει στο pegboards. Θες να πουλήσεις κάτι στην Αμερική. You can do it. It's not that hard. Λοιπόν, αυτό είναι το πιο σπουδαίο φαινόμενο. Ενωρίτερα είχατε ακούσει για τη τεχνολογία και για το φαΐ. Αυτό που θα προσπαθήσουμε να δημιουργήσουμε εδώ, να καταλάβει ο κόσμος τι γίνεται. At home dining, από, από, όλα, από όλα αυτά τα μαγαζιά μπορεί να πάρετε να το πάρετε σπίτι σας. Άμα δεν θέλετε να το πάρετε σπίτι σας, Fresh Direct, Instacart, the app, You order it on your phone, and it's delivered. Don't worry about a thing. Δεν θέλετε complete meal. Το Blue Apron και το, και το DIN θα σας στείλει, you ready for this? Ένα, ένα κυβότιο, και μέσα το κυβότιο έχει το ρύζι, τη, τη μπανάνα, τη, what, what ingredient do you want? What meal kit do you want to make at home? What meal kit? Go online, select it. The meal kit is put in with instructions. So when it comes to you that night or the next day, you can put the meal together at the house. Just organize it. Put it on your nice dish and sit down and have a meal. You're done. This is happening. Blue Apron, look them up. They just went public. People invested in this stuff. It's for real. And then meal delivery. So you can't go to any part of the country where you can't, get, you can't get delivery instantaneously. If you go to New York, it's called Seamless. You sign up your restaurant, boom. I go on it, I get what Greek food, it comes upstairs in a matter of minutes. And by the way, this doesn't happen just in New York, in Chicago, LA, Dallas. This is happening all across the country. And it's happening in places like Austin, in Providence, in Charlotte, in Portland, Oregon. Okay? Because these are trend cities, and, and that's where these consumers are teaching us how to act and how to buy and how to conduct commerce. So this is one of my favorites. It's very blurry, but I wanted you to see, this is from 2014. You can get a better look uh, at it um, because we'll make sure you get the presentation. This is food tech and media industry consolidating. These are all deals that happened since 14 in different areas. So recipes and cooking, communities, publishers, recipe boxes, product guides. This is the new restaurant loyalty, restaurant marketing analytics. This is the new world. When John told you that it's digitized and the consumer is now absorbed in it, and he showed you the statistical information between millennials and Zs, this is how they're going to run their life. And if you don't believe what you heard earlier about this kind of stuff coming to Thessaloniki and making Thessaloniki a Southeast Europe portal to the world, show up in another two years. I guarantee you we're going to have something like this. 
because if we don't do this, we're toast. This is where it's going. We can't follow it. We have to hurry up and get in it because we're disruptors right now. We have an opportunity to be disruptors. And I think it's important you have a handle on how this works because this is Moore's law. This is my favorite thing. In less than 10 years, the iPhone was not even around. The internet economy was a million dollars back in 87. It's 50.1 billion. We were talking about e-commerce. You ready for this? In 08, Black Friday, which is the day after Thanksgiving, and Cyber Monday, that weekend after Thanksgiving, was about a billion seven in online sales. This year, 17, 7.2 billion, seven times, 7.2 billion for the weekend. Okay? The best day was a, five mil, a billion dollar day, which was uh, the Friday. 2.6 billion was done on a cell phone. Deep as Nico. Mobile. And you know what's funny about that? That's nothing. Alibaba in China, one day e-commerce sales record, 25.6 billion. Miamera. It's here. Irte. Que ta leme, que ta cume. Que como aftite na sta tomara. So what do, you, what do you want me to do, Phil? I mean, I, you know, what, what do you want me to do? I want you to know it's here. I want you to get educated. I want you to understand how you fit in. Okay? And here's the punchline. And that's why I'm so proud to be here. There's only one way you're going to do this. With help. <gasps> Nobody's going to do it by themselves. Piso sto alignment. Yafto, kire prove, thank you for your leadership and the things that you've been doing at the, uh, at the chamber. The Enterprise Greece uh, people are here. They've been coming to Fancy Food for many, many years. 2018, I'm very proud. I'm very proud to say that I'm going to stand next to my people to cut the ribbon as a partner country at the Fancy Food Show in the summer. And least but not last, the folks from Hell Expo, this trilogy of Greek organized entities, along with the Specialty Food, show, uh, Specialty food Association, the Fancy Food Show, will build platforms to educate you, help you be informed, make you market ready, and put you in a marketplace. But you're going to have to want to. You're going to have to want to. You're going to have to try to believe in this. And um, I think the best thing I can tell you is study this. Grab on to anybody you can get who's going to give you some information. And everything I told you today, I suggest you take and go check. No matter what anybody tells you, no matter who they are or where they're from, check it out. See how it fits into your business. And make sure you reach out, at least here in Greece, as we build this Alliance. I'm more than happy to take some uh, questions. I think we, I'm five minutes early, which is rare for me. Que thelo na sas po poso 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 hero me kathe vora po ergo mestin elava. Yeti tavlo po kalitera ke kalitera kathe vora po ergo mestin elava. So, sa se faristo para poli deni po moni sa simera el piso na sas do meka. Ah, xerete xerete. Ε, βιαστήκαμε. Να σας, να σας δείξω κάτι, γιατί λέγαμε για το γύρο. Arby's. Ξέρετε τι είναι το Arby's. Ξέρετε τι είναι το McDonald's. Arby's is number two. They're fast food. But they're not burgers. They're roast beef. And they changed. It was really disaster. This place was horrible. Δεν είχαν καθόλου καλά μαγαζιά. Δεν ξέρανε τι κάνανε. Και εδώ και τρία χρόνια έχουν αλλάξει όλο το system. Και έχουν πάει in a canurio meros with all uh, grained meats, whole muscle meats, and they, they start with their authentic roast beef, and they go into turkey, ham, etc., etc. So, kati legame ya ta elnika fagita, ke ta pio efkola fagita, right? Ke pezume to video. What's up, you guys? I'm sitting in an Arby's parking lot, got here right at 10 a.m., first person in the drive-thru. I wanted to try their brand new gyros. They have a turkey gyro, a roast beef gyro, and a traditional beef gyro. And I'm gonna taste it, 
and I'll let you know what I think right here after this little thing that pops up. First, I'll try the turkey gyro. The sun is beating down on me here. Can I get it in more shade? There we go. That's a better angle. Uh, looks like your standard gyro with basically turkey style lunch meat. It smells like there's lots of oregano in this. <laughs> The turkey meat is good, but this needs more tzatziki. Tzatziki. Tzat, tzatziki. Tzatziki. I did that whole bit with food on my face. Just from this point forward, know that I don't know how to say that word. And let's get over it. Yeah. This needs more sauce. But the turkey is good. I like the flavor of the turkey. It's sliced super thin. I think this would be good if I had more sauce on it. So, my first note is to ask for extra sauce. Let's try the roast beef one. This is a big, oh, I just dropped roast beef somewhere on the floor of my car. Oh, there are my headphones. There's way more sauce on this guy, and it looks like just your traditional Arby's roast beef with seasoning on top. I actually like this one. I mean, I haven't had Arby's roast beef in a long time. I am pretty surprised at how much I like this. This one has way more sauce. They all need to have this much sauce. Okie dokie, time for the traditional one. I don't know why I just turned into a, a northern Minnesota. This looks like a gyro. This looks like your tradish gyro. I've now spilled food all over my floor. Next time my dogs are in this car, they're going to lose their minds. This is nice and hot, like fresh off the spit. That's what they call the thing the meat's on, the spit. I wasn't just being funny. I don't mind this at all. Arby's. You're killing me. I am so pleasantly surprised. That's good meat. This gyro meat is actually quite tasty. If you just handed me this gyro and didn't tell me, which by the way, if anybody ever just walks up to me and hands me a gyro, you're my new best friend. If you just handed me this gyro and didn't tell me where it was from, I would never have guessed Arby's. This tastes pretty legit. I'm, uh, Super shocked. This is really good. I can't, I'm kind of embarrassed that I like it so much, if you know what I'm saying. Don't tell anybody that I like the Arby's Euros! So my shocking conclusion is that these are a lot better than I thought they'd be and that they should be, quite honestly. The only disappointing thing about this trip was that I uh, realized that Arby's is a Pepsi product restaurant and not Coke. Diet Pepsi. You guys, thank you so much for watching. Thanks for being a subscriber if you are one. If not, subscribe. Hit that button, yo. Comment below. Let me know what you thought when you tasted these bad boys. I'll be back next week. Friday is when I post. Uh, I'll probably be eating or drinking or doing something. And I'll see you then. Bye. Ipe Greek puthana. Akusa the Greek puthana. Godan akusa Greek. Αυτή λέει καλύτερα το τζατζίκι παρά το λέω εγώ καμιά φορά. 63-64 κάπου εκεί, 65 million hits. Τρία λεπτά. Και απ' μάνα. Αυτό κάνει. Και το βρήκαν οι μάγκες και το πήρανε και κάνανε διαφήμιση because their big thing, two of those for six bucks. And it's a 30 second commercial, you can see it uh, on social media. Why am I showing you this? This is a 3,800 unit operation that's coming back to life with great stores, 3.6 billion in same store sales. These are the kind of opportunities that exist. And I just want you to be encouraged by the fact that the Americanakia to piasane que trejone. Okay? See you in the States. Do you have any questions? Anything?